Hey everyone, it's Amy. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Hobgrot slitters from the Cruel Boys. These are really fun and simple models to paint and they present a lot of fun textures and techniques to use when painting. So let's get started with the base coats. To start, I've airbrushed the main skin colour on the model using Hobgrot Hide. If you need to neaten up later, it's always best to apply another coat by brush to provide an even finish. After the skin base coat is dry, I'm now going to block out all of the other details on the model with black. For the straps on the model, I'm going to base coat these using Thondia Brown. Using Mechanica Standard Grey, I base coat his pants. For the red tassels hanging on him, I base coat these using Mephiston Red. I pick out his teeth and eyes using Rhinox Hide. For the nails on his hand and feet, I pick these out using a bad and black. There are a couple of different metallics on the model, so firstly, using Vallejo Metallic Air Gunmetal, I pick out the daggers, armour on his body and around his arm. I pick out the central plate on his front using scale 75 old copper. I pick out the ends of the daggers using scale 75 decayed metal. And that's all of the base coats now applied and now it's time to move on to adding some shading. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you're new to Siege Studios, we are a premium miniature painting service with over 50 artists. Here at Siege, we offer four painting levels, ranging from our bronze premium gaming quality up to our platinum competition standard. For your free quote today, follow the link in the description of this video. To shave the silver metallics, such as the dagger and the decoration around his arm, and also the red tassels, I use Norm Oil. I apply a shade of Agrax Earthshade to the straps, pants and the copper parts of the model. The armour panels on his body are a blue metallic on the ones that uh, the studio did. So to do a similar one, I've thinned down Drakenhof Nightshade on the palette using Lamian Medium. To shade the skin, I thin down Raiklan Flesh Shade with Lamian Medium and apply this as a soft shade all over the skin. I'm now going to apply some deeper shading to the skin and for this I'm going to use Scrag Brown. Moving now on to adding highlights to the model, I'm going to start by layering the skin. Using Hobgrot Hide, I reapply this to the raised areas of the skin to brighten those areas back up. On the skin, you may encounter some areas of slightly darker shade. We still want these areas to be there, but I want to turn them down a little bit. To do this, I thin down Hobgrot Hide into a glaze and apply this over the shaded areas to soften how dark the shade appears. Mixing Hobgrot Hide and Flayed One Flesh, I use this to apply highlights to the skin. I mostly use this to pick out and define musculature and raised edges. And I also use this to glaze a little bit on the top surfaces, such as the top of his head, the tops of his shoulders, essentially any areas that the light would hit the most. I pick out the eyes using Evil Sun Scarlet. I add a brighter highlight to the eyes using Wild Rider Red. I add a dot of white to the corner of the eyes to give the impression of a light reflection. For this, I use Vallejo Model Colour Cold White. I pick out the scars on his body using Bugman's Glow. Using Corn Red, I apply a glaze over the scars and his lips and nose. I apply this a little bit more on his nose to turn it red.
To highlight the scars, I use Kislev Flesh, which I apply in a scratchy manner to give the impression of it being scarred over. I also use Kislev Flesh to glaze over the knuckles, knees and the elbows. I pick out the teeth and the nails using Skaven Blight Dinge. I apply a second highlight to the teeth and nails using Carrick Stone. To highlight the straps, first I use Gawthor Brown and I run the edge of the brush along the straps to pick out the edges. I add a second highlight to the straps using Bane Blade Brown and again run the edge of the brush along these to pick them out. Moving on to the red tassels now, I pick these out the raised edges, leaving the recesses dark by using Evil Sun Scarlet. I apply a second edge highlight to the tassels using Wild Rider Red. I apply a highlight to the pants using Dawnstone. I also apply some small scratches and marks to give the impression of them being a warm textured material. To highlight the weapon handles, I apply an edge highlight of Dawnstone, and then I also use the Vallejo Black to cut back in and sharpen those lines. Using Green Stuff World's Liquid Pigments Orange Rust, I apply this all over the daggers and the metallic item hanging from his belt. I apply Green Stuff World's Liquid Pigments Burnt Earth to the previous metallic areas to give them a dirty, grimy appearance. I add some verdigris to the central copper plate using Green Stuff World's Liquid Pigments Verdigris. I pick out the silver metallics with a highlight of Vallejo Metallic Air Silver and I use this to draw scratches and marks to imply battle damage. Finally, I pick out the copper plate with a highlight of Canoptech Alloy. For the basing, I've decided to go for a dark grey scheme, which will contrast with the brightness of the models. First, I apply PVA glue to the base and then stick on a couple of small pieces of slate to be rocks. I then place it in the tub of sand, wiping off any excess on the edge of the base. While the PVA glue is still drying, I apply a coat of Mechanica Standard Grey. I water this down on the palette and apply small drops to the base. I left the bases to dry overnight fully, and now I'm going to apply a wash all over the base using Null Oil. Once the shade has dried on the base, I give it a first dry brush using Carrick Stone. I dry brush the base again, this time using Screaming Skull. I pick out the rocks on the base using Administratum Grey. I give the rocks a shade using a 50-50 mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Athernian Camo Shade. Once this is dry, I dry brush the rocks using Administratum Grey. I apply some Gamers Grass Beige Tufts to the bases using PVA Glue. To darken the tufts a little bit so they don't catch the eye, I give them a wash using Agrax Earth Shade. And that is the Cruel Boys Hobgrot Slitter now finished. I really enjoyed painting this model. It's a fun little model to paint. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.